All right. So I told you guys this before. Sometimes I want to make sure this is capturing. All right, can let's see, make sure it's all right, cool. Sorry, I have to remember to set that. Um, so I'm working on a track, wasn't finding a solo that just hit me when I wanted one. So I needed a little inspiration. So I've told you guys or showed you guys this before with regards to sampling. Sometimes you can borrow inspiration from other people and get the notes. That's one of the coolest thing about Ableton I really like. So I sampled in from um, a jazz horn song, this little sample. I'm not going to play it for copyright purposes. Dropped it in Serato Sampler, dropped out the drums, the bass, and the vocals. They didn't really have vocals on that part that I sampled. Um, <clears throat> here's the sample from Serato pitched into the key of the song I'm on. Now I'm playing in D sharp mixolydian, but C minor is the minor of that, of that uh, scale. So there you go. So I pitched it into that just to make sure that this sample would be on point. Of course, because jazz musicians will sometimes play tonal notes that sound out of scale, that's going to happen. So you just deal with it, but I'll show you some tricks I'm using. All right. So then I, here's where I converted it to MIDI and then I drug the MIDI up here. Now, let me delete this one because I don't need that. And I'm probably going to get rid of all this. I'm just using it for the MIDI. Okay. So here's the MIDI in its original form. I think there was like one note, this note right here, that was out of scale. So what I did was I selected all the notes just to be safe and hit fit to scale. I could have left it out, but it sounded pretty bad, that one note at least. So here it is. And it literally was, I'm going to show you this. Let's use this part here. This was the whole sample right here. So I borrowed it. So listen to this track. Now that I've done so many things to it, I can play it. It's just notes played over Swam Instruments, Trumpet, which I changed the room where the trumpet hits or blows or sounds, however you want to term that, spatial wise. And then I'm going to make this different color so that I don't get confused. Yes. My eyes are starting to deceive me on colors right now because I'm seeing too many. All right, let's go with that one. All right. So here's where it ends over here. But I wanted this thing to go the whole song. So what did I do? Well, I copied the um a certain section of the of the piece right here. Of this see this beginning part right here but I didn't want it to go here you can tell when you listen to it watch this so it goes up right there right I don't want the end to go up I want it to come down so I did was this little section what I needed right here I highlighted these notes and I transposed them down a whole octave just to bring it down so it Complete sound. See? So that way it doesn't. Now it sounds a little bit different. There you go. But it's the same notes here. It's just transposed down. So there's only what? 12 notes in music. So you're just figuring out ways to slur those notes and make them you know different octaves and things of that nature so you can you can take any of this section and shift it where you want it just highlight it shift hold shift down and press the up and down arrows and you can put them wherever you want that moves the notes around if you don't want it to peak or not peak but uh what is that is it crescendo no crescendo is going down anyway you know what i'm saying go up so the sound of it all right, so here we are again. So there you go. That's my trick, basically, of how I did this. 
And again, I don't need to keep this because this was just for inspiration to get some ideas going. Now I can go in and tweak whatever I don't like or whatever I do like. So anyway, that's the end of this video. Just showing you once again, now it's in a track. Sorry if the track was so loud. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can maybe turn this down to like 70. I have not mixed this track, so that's why it sounds extra loud, but um, I'll be going in and fixing some of this stuff. I'm gonna put this a little bit lower. I gotta go in and adjust certain parts that are just screaming. Um, we'll figure all that out in a minute. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Just wanted to show you guys this whole thing with um, using a sample idea to get the MIDI and then taking the MIDI and then adjusting parts and moving it around so that it doesn't repeat. Um, another thing I like to do in Ableton is select all and have some deviation in the sound so that it doesn't play it exactly the way it is all the time. So it doesn't so stagnant. It has uh, some variation in the velocity. <laughs> that you can use if you have this on, this is on iOS, by the way, Swam is on iOS. If you need a reverb, get um, Audio Damage EOS 2, really good. Use the ambient uh, setting in there. Really good for the horns. Um, and Swam, of course, is there. And then this plugin I'm about to show you is also on iOS, if you use it. Um, not Pan Station, but... Um, Hayes, Clev Grand, and they're on sale too right now. I believe Clev Grand's stuff is all on sale if you get it now. So I throw Hayes on, and then what I'll usually do is um, go to like instrument, woodwind, and just move this up. So you can use this one to set where you want the horns to be. I've kind of already done that with in Swam now that they have this. You can move it around and adjust it. And then if you want to bring the volume now, you should keep it around negative three, but just in case it's still peaking too loud. some of the notes are falling out of range so so you want to make sure you keep them within range so I think this is what two C2 so you got C that's not C that's um, E2 so it looks like E2 to C6 basically so anything that's out of range, it's not gonna be able to play it. So the way I usually fix that, like these I can obviously tell they're out of range. I'll go shift up. If they're still not in range, you just move them up a little bit there and now you have a So like this note are out of range, so shift up. So you have to play it up here. Now you're in range. So now you have all your notes.
So probably gonna have to come down on this bass a little more. It's, it's punching pretty loud. But anyway, this isn't about mixing. That takes time to gather all that. And every song is a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is bring this down to negative six. I just wanted to show you guys that I'll let you go. I apologize for holding you even longer than I should. But yeah, when you get confused or stumped on something, especially like solos or things of this nature, melodies, listen to a melody of a song that you like, sort of. See if you can pick out like a piano solo or a piano, whatever. Doesn't even have to be in the same key. And then just snatch that little snippet of audio, convert it to MIDI, and then as a melody, and then play it back. Now, if you need bass lines or um, melodies or uh, like horn leads or something like that, always convert it to a melody. Okay. And then the drums, of course, do it as the drums. All right, stating the obvious, I'm out to the next.